Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a gauge run chart. Now a run chart basically is just a line chart when you think about it. Now a gauge run chart is related to the gauge R and R study. And the R stands R and R stands for repeatability and repro reproducibility. And this is when you're measuring variability between parts and operators. And so this is something that is used uh, kind of in the statistical circles and the MAIC type of uh, domain where you're trying to observe uh, the variability between an operator and the part number to see if there's any patterns in the data. Now, I'm not really an expert in statistical processes, but I can show you an example of how to create a gauge run chart. Uh, this is probably something that you can create natively in a program called Minitab. Here's kind of a short hack to create or reproduce a similar type of gauge run chart, but using Excel. So this is what it looks like. Basically, we've got our products at the bottom and we've got our operators uh, within a portion of those product areas. So we have, for example, uh, Mike is in blue, Tariq is in red, Sally in gray, and Ming in yellow. So you can kind of see uh, a comparison between uh, the operators in product one or item one and then an item two and item three. So let me show you how this is created. And partially, this is created by the way that we lay out our table. So for example, we need to lay out a table where we would have, uh, depending on how many instances uh, that we measure for each operator, we have to lay them out in its own separate row. In addition, they have to be laid out in their own separate uh, column. And in between, in those columns, uh, that data for that particular operator is just for them and not for the other ones and the same for the row. That row is just for that operator and uh, solely for Tariq here, solely for Sally here. So the intersection of the value is the intersection of the uh, row identification for Sally and the row identification, the column ident identification for Sally here. And we have our item number one here. And the reason why it's here is it kind of helps to segment the data when we chart it out. So let me show you how that works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this a particular table here for this instance. Uh, let me go ahead and copy that, control C to copy, and then go to the demo here, and then control V to paste. So we have our data here. So as I said before, uh, Mike has his own row here and own column here. And so we can see that the data uh, represented for each product is kind of separated out. So I'm going to go ahead and type product up here, and I'll go ahead and uh, copy the formatting. Select the format painter and just copy it over here so it looks uh, uh, more presentable. And for this first row, put product uh, A, product A. I used product one earlier, but it doesn't matter. Product A will be will suit just fine here. Double click to uh, auto fit there. And I'm going to go ahead and select uh, these ranges of rows here where it ends up. So this is all going to be product A. Mike uh, begins it and it's going to end it here for the next one, or Ming's going to end it here. And I'm going to go ahead and select Merge and Center. It all merges and centers it into one cell. I'm just going to do a little bit of formatting here so it's a little bit more uh, presentable. I'm going to middle align it and also going to change the orientation of the text. So I'm going to rotate the text up. And basically that's for product A. Do the same for product B. Uh, let me go ahead and just change that. Oops. Let me go ahead and change that to product B here. Uh, enter and then select from Mike all the way down to Ming here. And then do the same thing. Merge and Center and then go ahead and middle align that and change the uh, alignment here and do that for product C here. Product C and then enter and then select that and go ahead and select that range merge and center go ahead and select that center and go ahead and rotate the text up here. I also kind of like to reformat this and get my grid lines here so let me go ahead and select these cells and just go ahead and click the borders and go ahead and select all borders. So have a kind of a nice view there. So as I said before, uh, Mike has his own row here and his own column here. So what I need to do now is go ahead and insert that chart. So select anywhere within this range of cells, go under insert and go under the uh, insert line chart. And I'll just go ahead and insert this line chart with the markers because I want to have those markers there. So once that is set, this gives us a beginning of our gauge run chart. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the size here a little bit. And what we need to do is we don't really need these grid lines here. So I'm going to select those grid lines, press delete, and I'm also going to kind of put the uh, divider grids here. 
because we want to be able to show that this particular section is product A, this particular section is product B, and product C. There's not really a, a neat way to do this natively within the charting engine for Excel, so we'd have to put it in manually. So what I want to do is go under the insert, and under insert, we're going to insert a shape. And basically, I'm just going to insert uh, a line. So if you, these are the recently used shapes. I recently used this line shape, but the line is going to be this first shape here. So once I select on that, you can see that it turns into uh, a cross. And what I'm going to do to draw a straight line, I just press the shift key and kind of move this up here. So I've got a straight line. If I didn't press the shift key, uh, it would be a little bit harder to draw a straight line because I can, I can go back and forth here, but it will draw a straight line up. So I'm going to keep that straight line and also uh, change that to a black color. Right, and so this is kind of off skew, so I'm going to go ahead and use the arrow keys to kind of move it into place. Oops, let me go ahead and select this and move, use the arrow keys on the keyboard, which didn't work out too well, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the mouse key. Uh, left click on the mouse and just kind of move it into place there. And so that's kind of set there. If I wanted to go ahead and create another one for this one, I can go ahead and go under the insert and go to shapes, or I can just have this selected and press the control D, which will duplicate that shape. And I just go ahead and move it on over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and set it into place here. So we have actually segregated our products now. Now, we don't really want to see all this. It's kind of challenging to go ahead and kind of uh, format the text here. We really don't want to see all these because we have our legend here that kind of describes uh, each of these lines and we really want the products. And you can't really uh, modify one without modifying the text of the other. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this access label. Go ahead and just select it and press delete. Whoops, control Z to undo. Uh, let me go ahead and do that again. Select it, right click. Let's do right click and then select delete and that will delete that. So you kind of notice that it's kind of moved it up a little bit. Um, so I can just kind of move these uh, lines a little bit lower so it'll look a little bit better. So I'll just go ahead and select that, press the control key. So I'll multi-select and kind of just bring it down a little bit so it kind of matches, uh, kind of formats it a little bit better. Now how do I get the labels here? Well we can actually just insert text boxes to represent and link it to the cells here. So what I'm going to do is go under insert, I can insert text, and I'll go ahead and insert a text box right here and I'll just go ahead and put a text box here and once that's entered I'm going to go up to the formula bar here and just press equal and select that cell and press enter and what it's done, what's done is it's made a link to that cell and so whatever I adjust or modify in the cell it will show up here so this is going to be product A I'm going to go ahead and bold that a little bit and then press enter whoops didn't do that let me go ahead and select it again and then select the bold now it's bolded and probably want to center that too so now that's set uh, I can just do the same as I did earlier where I duplicated uh, this shape I can actually duplicate this text box select it press control D to duplicate and just kind of whoops control Z to undo that move let me go ahead and select this text box here select it again so it's solid line let me go ahead and move it over here and since it's selected I'll go to the formula bar press equal and select where it says product B here so this is A18 which that product B text is press enter and now I've got product B so I need to go ahead and select that and go ahead and bold it again let me get press bold a couple times and that's bolded press control D to duplicate again so I can do product C here so I'll go ahead and put that there go up to the formula bar equal and I'll have to scroll down for product C cell so that's going to be an A35 but once I click in here you'll notice it selects A34 which shows up here press enter let me go back up and you can see product C will show up here so once that's selected go ahead and just uh, select the bolt let me maybe I have to press it twice again the boat now we have product A B and C which shows uh, our indication for the product so we have an area for the product and we have our different lines for each of the operators now let's say for example we, we changed names here we didn't call this product A anymore so since I linked it to the cell I can just change it here and maybe I'll just call it this item A item A and you notice once I hit that the return button the return key it changes the item uh, item A and if we had a, a lot of rows, for example, if you had a lot of uh, items or a lot of products, uh, instead of just doing it one by one, you can, I can just select the cell here, press Control H, and well, actually I don't want to select A1 because I will change it there too. So let me go ahead and change everything to product, uh, from product to item. And you notice that the, I made a spelling error here, so I'm going to go ahead and just change that first. 
and make that product at the C in there, product C, and go back up. And so if we had a lot of these uh, products and we wanted to change it uh, all in one instead of one by one, since these particular item boxes, these text boxes are linked to the cell, we can do it quite easily. So if I select this box and just kind of like uh, press control shift and press the down arrow, it's going to select that range. I may have to press it, the down arrow, control shift down one more time. So it's selected B and C. Let me go back up here and then press control H, which is the keyboard shortcut to replace uh, control F. If you press Control F, it will bring up the Find tab here. But if you press Control H, like Happy, it will bring up the Replace. So all I need to do is enter Product. I want to change Product to Item. And so once I uh, click Replace All, it's going to change the cells here to Item B and Item C, respectively. And uh, I will instead of doing it one by one, it does it all at once. So Replace All. It's made two replacements. Click OK. And then once I click close, you'll see that it will change here because it changed in the cell. So go ahead and click close, and now you notice that it's changed. And the ones in the cell here, item B and item C, have changed. And basically what I need to do last here is just probably change the title. Uh, this will be gauge run chart. Oops, chart. I go ahead and click the X there to close it. And this is something that you can, whoops, let me go ahead and change that, remove the Y there. Uh, and then leave it there. So this is something you can do in Excel. I mean, if you had Minitab, the, uh, the statistical uh, software application, they have it natively where you can create a gauge run chart. But if you didn't have it and you wanted to kind of mimic it or simulate a gauge run chart in Excel, this probably would be a, a hack or kind of a, a way to do it uh, using these particular methods. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.